Wyoming backcountry discovery route is a 900 mile journey through some of the most remote and beautiful landscapes in the American West. From the towering peaks of the snowy and wind river mountain ranges to the rolling hills of the Great Divide Basin, this route will test your skills and leave you in awe. Whether you're an experienced off-roader or just looking for an adventure, the Wyoming BDR is a must-do for any outdoor enthusiast. So grab a beverage and sit back as we take you through our journey on the Wyoming BDR. Just packing up the last few things to load up on the bike to start the Wyoming BDR tomorrow morning. 0530 Wyoming bound. Here we go. After getting fuel, I knew it was going to be a long day, roughly 650 miles. I met Dan in Caldwell, Idaho at our friend's coffee shop, Bond and Bevel, and then we made our way together to Twin Falls, Idaho, where we would end the day with a hotel, some much needed food, and some nice views of the Snake River. All right, so official day one, we're in. Uh, Twin Falls, Idaho stayed here at the Holiday Inn last night and now we're gonna head to bags We have about six and a half hours to seven hours to get there and then we're gonna try to do part of section one to start hopefully get to bags around Noon or one o'clock and then be at camp by three. So let's see how this goes <laughs> What you, what you doing there? You making a little halter top? <laughs> making a belly shirt. <laughs> yeah. Getting gas at Come and Go. Which seems like a kind of a funny name for a gas station, but. Piss and rain. We're about 100 miles from bags from the start. Hopefully, this storm blows through. thunder a minute ago and then we went to the country inn and had some good old-fashioned homemade food so knock out a couple hours of the route and find some camp hopefully we'll stay dry tonight so here we go official day one section one Wyoming BDR oh and then perfectly now it's raining perfect <laughs> Starting off with some rain. Oh, there's some good lightning. So this storm is moving this way. And you can see it here. We're gonna probably get wet regardless at some point, but we're trying to let all that lightning and thunder go in front of us because we don't want to get in that and then set up camp so we are kind of on top of a hill right now <laughs> but i'm hoping that that's far enough away that it doesn't bother us but you can see it's nice and dark and then we're nice and pretty back that way All right, so the storm has moved from there all the way through about where we need to go. So we're gonna start crawling that way and hopefully by the time we get there, it'll have moved through. 
took us probably what 20 25 minutes something like that So we made it to camp after watching the storms move through. And I think, at least for now, we might be good for the night. We'll see. Some blue sky in the distance. Found this little aspen grove not too far off the route. And we're going to set up camp here for the night. Dan's already set up. I had to do some maintenance. Had a really awful clunking sound coming from my bike. And... Thought it was something going to be catastrophic, but it ends up, turns out there was a rock inside my front sprocket cover and uh, it was making a nice little grinding noise. So got that out of there and saved the day. So going to get camp set up and then um, make ourselves a drink and some food, a fire, and then probably just uh, relax and go to bed. It's, it's been a long day. Monday, our official day one. Just uh, got loaded up, getting ready to finish up section one into Centennial. Had a little bit of rain last night, but everything is fairly dry now. So, finish up section one, see what Centennial has to offer, and then do some, some of section two. Uh, take a little recoup break here and get ready for the expert section of this uh, section one up to Bridger Peak. This ought to be fun. All right, good. That happened fast. No, I'll pick it up real quick. I don't even know what happened. Well, maybe stop and just wait for me, yeah. I think that's what happened. I just hit the mud. Yeah, that was, uh, was not expected. I'm gonna get back on this now. Dude, my foot peg is broke. I All right, status update. 
So we got about 800 feet <laughs> into the expert section and hit a little muddy spot where some rocks were. And the bike went down just right down the hill there. Got started again, didn't think anything of it, went to set up, stand up on the peg and the right peg was gone, which is a known problem on the Africa Twins. I've done it before, but I also now have a peg camel brace, but apparently it was just the right enough hit to where it didn't, it didn't hold. So I've got, got some JB weld on there, some heavy duty zip ties and some wire. Letting that set up for a little bit and then we're gonna give it a go. You ready? can't see shit from up here. 11,010 feet. Yeah, this is uh this is high. 11,000 feet. This is high as South Sister. Well, we made it down from the top. Uh, well, at least off the dog leg. And now we have the lower section of this expert section to complete totally socked in but hopefully we'll get under the clouds here soon We are at the bottom finally. Highway 70 is right there. We'll take that and tie back into the original route. We did it without any issues except for one big one. But the foot peg is it's hanging on. It's a little bit loose, but it's it's supporting me. So um, we'll see if I can find some more bailing wire or whatever and get it get it really locked in. And I think we'll be good the rest of the trip. A little bit of bailing wire reinforcement. I think we'll I think we'll be okay. Thank you, uh, Riverside Garage and Hardware Store. 
for having everything we needed. All right, let's get the hell moving here. Through this next section it was obvious that there had been a lot of water moving through here. We had heard that there might be some landslides and sure enough, not too far down the road, we ran into them. going guys I'm guessing that's impassable we just got reports of these slides so yeah we were just talking about that like I'm surprised there's not a landslide I think you know there might be a few more out further but you mind if we walk it real quick and just see if we can make it through instead of having to backtrack all yeah the way? you're certainly welcome I'm gonna okay. move the truck over in case you guys want to go through yeah I'll back up a little bit and after taking a quick look at it it really didn't look that bad so we decided to go ahead and push on thanks guys Going across a few more little slides, we were able to make our way out of it, and the road did eventually clear up. Even through all of this rocky off-camber riding, the foot peg was holding solid and I was building more confidence knowing that it was going to make it through the rest of the trip. This allowed me to start to relax on the bike and I was really starting to have a lot of fun now. Yeah, they had a little bit of water come through here I think. Well, we successfully completed that water crossing. My run wasn't very clean, but I'm so glad we got across it. I just had shit luck this trip so far, so I was a little bit worried that it was gonna continue on. Dan made it look super easy. Um, but yeah, I got this out of the way. We're gonna go find some camp. So made it through the water crossing that 
uh, I think everyone's kind of worried about on the BDR section two. Uh, made it through um, with really no incident. We were a little bit worried about it just because the water is a little bit higher considering there's been a lot of rain, but uh, made it to this awesome, <clears throat> awesome campsite just right after the water crossing. Got Dan's set up here. Did a little bit of laundry, got some clothes hanging. And then got the bike over here. And there's this old cabin. It looks all dilapidated, but pretty neat. Somebody's uh, really dressed up the place with a fire pit and a Christmas tree. So this is gonna be the little hangout spot tonight. Gonna get a fire going, um, have some dinner. Have some dinner and then just uh, I'm doing some file transfers and everything, some housekeeping and um, get some good sleep tonight hopefully because we got the sound of the river behind us. And then we'll finish up section two and hopefully knock out section three tomorrow. So that's the update for right now. Um, we're sitting here in camp, day official end of day one. And it was a rough one starting out. It ended up being really good, but starting out, let's uh, let's go through it. Well, actually, let's go through let's go through the end of yesterday and then the start of today. So before or after we almost got struck by light. So <laughs> so end of yesterday was kind of our official start, but we we get to bags we. Uh, you know, kind of get fuel, and we're like, all right, let's let's get the route going. And there, there's been a lot of storms lately, and there was a hell of a storm moving through yesterday. I mean, the sky was black, lightning going everywhere. And then you had said that there was somebody whose bike got struck by lightning. That's what I saw on the, yeah, on the forum, that somebody got in a tight spot, they dropped their bikes, they went to find some cover, and then Within like 15 seconds, the bike got hit by lightning. That's incredible. So yeah, I guess you can probably find that on the Facebook, uh, the Wyoming BDR Facebook page. But yeah, so that in the back of our minds, we we stop at the kind of this viewpoint almost, and we watch this giant storm move across, which I think was a good idea because one, it let the rain kind of come and then dry out the dry the roads out. And then we kind of got behind the storm and then set up camp in this little aspen grove last night, which which was essentially <laughs> a zoo. Yeah, it worked out. Pilots, elk, <laughs> cattle, traffic. Yeah, it wasn't far off the roads. And then it rained. Uh, it rained when we were setting up camp. It rained at about midnight. And then it rained again about 2. So we woke up to wet tent you've seen on camera we've kind of had a, a, a day we started the day off high hopes busted out uh, part of section one get to the, the expert section and we're stoked to hit it and then I made it about a hundred yards <laughs> and I, I after watching the video I hit a rock that kicked me out and I instantly went to the ground Picked the bike up, thought, okay, no big deal. We'll keep rolling. Went to stand up on the foot pegs and realized I had no right foot peg. This is now the third time that has happened, even with nothing against Camel ADV. Their Camel Brace is awesome, but I have shit luck when it comes to that. I mean, it must have hit just right because it sheared off. And uh, luckily, with enough zip ties and bailing wire, we're able to get it to where it yeah. hasn't really been an issue today. Made our way through the expert section on the way down um, and then started section two after making it all the way through and um, stopped at a what restaurant was that? The Bear? Bear? Yeah, the Bear. Bear or something. Grill, bar and grill. Had a good burger. Uh, got some beer and some, uh, some beer and uh, some gas at the little mercantile there and then headed off to section two from Centennial. It's a really cool start to the route. Um, goes around, uh, what's the name of that pass? It's right here down below. 
can't remember the name. <laughs> you can't remember the name of it. <laughs> but it's like 12,000 feet. We only got to about 10,500 or 600, but you can see it's it's right off the road, the the top end. There's some really cool mountain lakes. About to see some moose today, and then hit the expert section on section two. Thinking that we were going to set up camp before the water crossing because I, I think both of us were a little bit not wanting to do that today. Uh, but sure as shit, it's like right at the beginning of section, section expert section of section two. And uh, it worked out. I mean, Dan killed it, right? It made him go first. <laughs> and then and then I went across and we, we, we got through it. So um, we decided that was the point where, okay, the next camp spot we find, we will uh, we'll, we'll set up camp and this is it. I mean, this is a, we're inside of a cabin right now. There's a Christmas tree. We were wondering what the F this was about. Somebody made a Christmas tree and then just off camera, melting my cameras right now is, uh, is a pretty decent fire we've got going. So all in all, it was an adventure of a day for sure. It was really what it's all about. So um, we're going to finish these drinks, probably get some decent sleep, hopefully. Um, I don't see why we wouldn't because it's not raining today. Mm -hmm. And then we'll knock out the rest of section two tomorrow and section three. That's our plan. So appreciate you guys being here and watching it but uh, we'll see what the rest of this this adventure has for us so stay tuned anything else yeah. and a few words yeah. on the next episode well we're definitely dealing with a little bit of mud issue it does not even doesn't it's 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 mud yeah uh-huh If you like this video, check out this one. Or YouTube suggests this one here. If you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button as well as that bell icon. That way you know when more videos like this are released. Or if you want to support the channel, check out the Patreon page. Guys, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.